know what he's trying to say is trying to show any kind of art in ancient history and saying it's proof of Christianity starting from a mushroom cult. When showing an artist's representation from the 12th century about Adam and Eve, which is something, a very common motif for artists being commissioned back then anyway, and artists probably do a lot of shrooms, what does that prove? And even if you found it in the Vatican itself, if you found it underneath the Vatican, what would that prove? I mean, we've shown time and time again that all the Vatican is is a continuation of the Roman religion. They turned their many pantheon of gods into the saints, and they turned their top goddess into Mary. But the common enemy of Rome and the hybrid Christian-slash-pagan Catholic Church was always real Christians, people that really believed in the Bible and really believed in Jesus Christ. Those people were the enemy of both Rome and the Catholic Church. Of knowledge of good and evil. Well, the whole concept is if you take the, 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 the mushroom and it opens up your mind to all kinds of off-the-wall things, of course you can talk to God. All of the Jewish reference books, all the Encyclopedia Judica, all of, uh, you go to the synagogue, uh, go up into uh, Mulholland Drive, up to the Jewish University and spend three weeks there and look up Saturn. You'll find out that 98% of all Judaism is a worship of the planet Saturn. Better wake up and understand where this stuff comes from. Where this stuff comes from is quite simply Madame Helena Blavatsky, where Jordan Maxwell gets his name from, Jordanus Maximus. Maxwell is not presenting any new information here. He is repeating almost verbatim what Blavatsky writes in her book, The Secret Doctrine. Again, this would not be notable if it were true. I've spent the last few days doing as Maxwell suggests in this clip and try to track down any record of what he is saying in history besides Madame Blavatsky. After much study, it appears the root of the idea comes from the Roman historian Tacitus. This is what Tacitus says. Keep in mind, Tacitus worshipped Saturn, and in other places in this writing, it was obvious that he had been given false information about what the Torah actually said. He says, We are told that the seventh day was set aside for rest, because this marked the end of their toils. In course of time, the seductions of idleness made them devote every seventh year to indolence as well. Others say that this is a mark of respect to Saturn, either because they obey the basic principles of their religion to IDI, who, we are told, were expelled in the company of Saturn and became the founders of the Jewish race, or because among the seven stars that rule mankind, the one that describes the highest orbit and exerts the greatest influence is Saturn. A further argument is that most of the heavenly bodies complete their path in revolutions in multiples of seven. Whatever their origins, these observances are sanctioned by their antiquity. The other practices of the Jews are sinister and revolting, and have entrenched themselves by their very wickedness, wretches of the most abandoned kind. It should be noted that in Tacitus's writing, it is very anti-Semitic. In addition, as a Roman, Tacitus worshipped Saturn, and while writing to the Roman Emperor, it was very likely that he has, as he did in other places in the writing, forced Roman religion on the Jewish history. I encourage you to read Tacitus's account of the Jewish history, because this fact becomes quite obvious, and is noted copiously by the many scholars who have reviewed his work. It should be noted that Blavatsky uses this writing of Tacitus to build her theory that Judaism came from Saturn worship, in her book Isis Unveiled, Volume 2, which Jordan Maxwell says in an interview is his favorite book. And this is yet another example of him telling us that true history is Madame Blavatsky's history, despite the lack of any other supportive data. Lucius, all mean in Latin, light. This is why you have Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker is Lucius walking across the sky, and he's doing battle with the Prince of Darkness, whose name in the Egyptian was Set, S-E-T, because they noticed it got dark at sunset. Like so many of Jordan Maxwell's word insights, this could only work in modern English. The ancient Egyptians' word for the sun setting sounded nothing like the word set, as in their god set, and they never called him the prince of darkness either. Maxwell forces the term on set because he needs it to prop up this theory. This is very deceptive, certainly not something you'd want from a teacher. Some have suggested that Maxwell's just telling us what the mystery school believes, not what he believes or what real history is. 
But he says quite the opposite, and in fact never in this three-hour presentation ever mentions that this is what the mystery schools believe. He says quite plainly, this is real history. Yahweh is not the name of God. Yahweh in Hebrew is an expressive term. It's expressing something. It's uh, describing something. It's not, a, it's not a formal name of God. Yahweh in Hebrew simply means, and the best way to explain what the word means is to take a garden hose and twist hold the, the, the end of it, turn on the water and you feel the pressure building up. When you release the hose it's a release of pressure, it's a release of energy. In the Hebrew, in the ancient Hebrew, the release of dynamic energy was called Yahweh. And it was always associated with sex. It's the building up of the sexual urge and the releasing of sex in the sex act was referred to in the ancient Phoenician Canaanite system as being one with Yahweh. This is a series of huge lies from Jordan Maxwell. I encourage anyone to go try and research that in ancient Hebrew the release of dynamic energy was called Yahweh and that it was always associated with sex. There is a lot of debate on the meaning of Yahweh, but those debates come to no conclusion anything like Maxwell's. In ancient Hebrew, the word Yahweh, also referred to as the Tetragrammaton, can mean many things. Meanings like He that hath sent me, He who is always the same, He who is absolutely truly existent, He has, He is, He will be. Some suggest I am the one I am, or I am whatever I need to become. Maxwell's definition, although it comes directly from Blavatsky, stems from the idea that Yahweh could have come from the proper name of the Phoenician Canaanite god Yam. It was at this point that Madame Blavatsky writes in her book, The Theosophical Glossary, the meaning that Jordan Maxwell will one day use to say what he just said although he adds quite a bit in his definition in order to fit with his previous theory that anoint means to anoint with sexual fluid in the hopes of trying to paint the picture of Jesus Christ being anointed with semen. Keep in mind what Blavatsky is saying here offers no sources or previous support of any kind not to mention that no matter which way you look at it this word yao is not ancient by any stretch of the imagination even Blavatsky says it was derived from Greek and could be considered Neoplatonist. That's well after the time of Christ. Maxwell is wrong on several levels here. I'd like to point out that Wikipedia makes a good point when it says, In its earlier form, this opinion rested chiefly on certain misinterpreted testimonies in Greek authors about a god, Lao, and the conclusive, this was conclusively refuted by Baudison. Re recent adherents of this theory build more largely on the occurrence in various parts of the territory of proper names of persons and places. Okay, now I'd like to point out this is exactly what M Maxwell says at the beginning of the clip that Yahweh is not, and that is based on a proper name. He says it's a concept. Again, he's referring to the Kabbalah Gnostic, but this is much later and it's not even close to his actual definition. It's important to realize that the Canaanite god's name was Yam, not Yao. Again, I encourage you guys to go out there and try to find any record that the ancient Hebrew people's word for the release of dynamic sexual energy was Yahweh. Good luck. As you may have guessed by now, Jordan Maxwell is not this man's real name. And I don't have any kind of problem with that. Using a pseudonym is a perfectly reasonable and understandable practice. But there is something a little fishy with the name that Jordan Maxwell chose. Here's why. In Madame Helena Petrovna Blavatsky's book, Isis Unveiled, Volume 2, Theology, she tells us what her version of the Nazarene Trinity is. And she tells us that the second in the Trinity is Jordanus Maximus. It is said that Jordanus Maximus the water of life, he is the one through whom we alone can be saved. Now on Jordan Maxwell's website there's a section where it just lists a bunch of words that Jordan Maxwell is encouraging people to just do their homework on. Apparently because he's just so good with words. And one of those words is Jordanus Maximus and it has some question marks to the side of it. And then it's the only word that has a little addendum to the right. That addendum says, 
This term was brought to Jordan's attention in an email he received from a rabbi. We thought we'd just throw this one in.